Welcome, caring viewers, to today's episode of Planet Earth, our loving home on Supreme Master Television. From August 18th to 21st, over 5,000 participants convened at the World City Water Forum 2009 in Incheon, South Korea. The forum's theme was Innovation and Harmony of Water and Cities. The event was sponsored by the organizing committee of the World City Water Forum, the Korea Water Forum and the Incheon Regional Environmental Technology Development Center with support from various South Korean government agencies. Prominent scientists, key government leaders, academics and youth delegates from 50 countries gathered to discuss vital topics such as global warming's effects on water supplies, climate change adaptation through rainwater harvesting, global increases in floods and droughts, groundwater management and water pollution. The esteemed speakers included His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Tuvalu, Apisai Ile Mia, His Excellency Anu Titong, President of the Republic of Kiribati, the former Prime Minister of Japan, His Excellency Yoshiro Mori, and His Excellency South Korean Prime Minister, Dr. Hang Sang Soo. Prime Minister Hung, a global warming expert and former United Nations Special Envoy on Climate Change and tireless worker to create a greener career, set the tone for the conference with his speech. Today we are living in a world where water, especially clean and safe water, is rapidly becoming scarce. To compound this problem of water scarcity, water-related disasters such as tsunamis, floods, tropical storms, hurricanes, cyclones, and droughts are occurring at higher severity and frequency as global warming changes our climate system at an unprecedented scale and speed. As the effects of climate change are rapidly deteriorating the world water supplies, it is imperative that the global community come together to act boldly, decisively, and without delay. A growing number of countries turning their focused attention toward climate and water issues and developing appropriate responses in order to tackle the challenges. Right now, at this very moment, over 900 million people around the world, especially in parts of Africa and Asia, do not have access to safe drinking water. We need to continue to work toward a more comprehensive and effective global cooperation for dealing with the water agenda and water-related disasters. Climate change is primarily being driven by the dangerously high levels of greenhouse gases emitted during the meat production process. As we've just heard from Prime Minister Hung, the effects of planetary warming are devastating. Rainfall is becoming more sporadic in some areas and in others so excessive that floods occur, even within the same country. For example, over 160,000 residents of China's northeastern Liaoning province have been left without sufficient drinking water due to a prolonged drought. The area's 38 small reservoirs are depleted, with 10,000 hectares of crops declared ruined, and over 400,000 adversely affected by the scarcity of water. By contrast, this past June in southern China, massive floods caused by severe storms caused more than 500 people to perish and nearly 1.5 million others in five different southern provinces to be displaced. Economic losses from the storms and floods total approximately 2.5 billion US dollars. During the forum, young delegates provided updates on the water situation where they reside. Formosa or Taiwan has seen temperatures steadily increase over the last century. The amount of annual rainfall is rising as well, but with fewer rainy days. The Water Resources Agency, or WRA, under the Ministry of Economic Affairs, has projected that by 2021, the demand for water on the island will exceed supply by 800 million metric tons. Sadly, extreme weather events are also occurring with greater frequency.
，这一次来到韩国，很高兴可以有这一次的机会来参加这这一次的活动。这一次活动主要是有关于水资源的部分。在我们台湾，我们常常说一句话：没有水就没有生活。因为气候的改变，使台风更加频繁来自台湾，而且台风的威力也越来越强。这一次的莫拉克台风带来我们台湾很多人的死亡，也让很多人无家可归。Thailand is the world's top exporter of rice, and global warming is posing an immense threat to Thai agriculture. Shalisa from Thailand explains what she is doing to stop climate change. สวัสดีค่ะดิฉันมาจากประเทศไทยค่ะดิฉันชื่อชาลิสัตเอ้ยที่ดิฉันกินผักเพราะว่าในเนื้อสัตว์มีสารพิษทําลายร่างกายค่ะแล้วก็ตอนนี้โลกของเราก็ได้เปลี่ยนไปมากจึงทําให้มีการเกิดแผ่นดินไหวทําให้เกิดมีการเกิดการน้ําท่วมดิฉันเชื่อว่าการกินผักช่วยทําให้โลกเย็นได้ค่ะ The fouling of water bodies due to human activity was another area addressed at the forum. Youth delegate Takako of Japan shares her thoughts on the subject. I am from Japan. I am from Japan. I am from Japan. I am from Japan. Yamaya,川へ行って本物の自然を見て美しい自然を感じ取って、そうしたら意識も変わっていって、もっと問題を考えられるようになると思います。そしてとこういうあと特別な活動だけでなく、会社や家族などであの一般的なところからそういう問題
sometimes with a lot of violence. And uh, people are swept away. And uh, the consequences of those floods result in people losing their homes and losing their crops. And that's, in my view, the effect of climate change. Because if it is not so, what is? Because these things didn't used to happen a long time ago. And they are happening because of the change in the climate and the global warming. I think that uh, we need a lot of cooperation in the world, like what uh, this fora in uh, Incheon has done, bring world leaders and experts talking about tomorrow and not today, and talking about tomorrow. And so I think that uh, my message is the world must come together. The world must come together. As a small island nation in the South Pacific, Tuvalu is extremely vulnerable to global warming, particularly with respect to rising sea levels. Prime Minister Apisai Ialemia of Tuvalu addressed foreign participants and spoke in detail about the challenges his country and others around the world face with respect to climate change. Industries also emit so much carbon into the atmosphere, fueling global warming. It also causes climate change and in particular sea level rise. The latter is the main threat to low-lying small island states such as Tuvalu, as well as cities, towns and villages located near the coast. As far as Tuvalu is concerned, this is our major concern. Small island countries are no different from other countries in that fresh water is essential to human existence and a major requirement in agricultural and other commercial production systems. However, the ability of the island countries to effectively manage the water sector differs in Tuvalu as we are constrained by our small size, isolation, fragility, and a limited human, financial, and natural resource base. Increasingly vulnerable rainfall Cyclones, hurricanes, accelerating storm water runoff, floods, droughts, decreasing water quality and increasing demand for water are so significant in our islands that they threaten the economic development and the health of our peoples. The Inter-Panel Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, continues to report that expected climatic changes will stimulate an increase in extreme weather patterns that include higher temperatures, increased number of hot days, more intense rainfall over some areas, increased droughts in others, and an increased frequency and severity of cyclones and hurricanes. One method the Tuvalu government uses to address global warming is working to assure a continuous supply of fresh water for its citizens by retaining rainfall. Historically, groundwater used to be the main source of water supply, but given the increasing salinity and contamination, it is getting difficult and may no longer be used. Tuvalu does not have a centralized water system like in many other countries. Consequently, rain becomes and is our sole source of safe water supply and our most urgent response is to significantly improve and maximize our rainwater harvesting and storage capacity. That is households, community halls, offices and other major buildings should have proper corrugated aluminum roofing, well-connected guttering and water tanks or water systems to effectively correct the rain. With these facilities in place, we should be able to catch and store as much rain as we can during the wet or cyclone season, normally from October to March the following year. So we would be able to sustain our water needs during the long, dry or drought season, normally from April to September.
For more details on the World City Water Forum 2009, please visit www.wcwf2009.org. Attentive viewers, thank you for joining us for today's program. Next Wednesday on Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, we will feature more excerpts from Prime Minister Apisai Iole Mia's address at the World City Water Forum 2009 and hear from other participants. Up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May we all take the utmost care of our planet. Save the world and save the planet. Mizu o mamoro, tsukyu o mamoro. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash pe.